Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the Roadmaster automatic battery disconnect here on a 2020 Lincoln Nautilus. So what is an automatic battery disconnect? Well, it's sort of in the name. It's going to disconnect the positive terminal on our battery with a flick of a switch. Now, the reason this is important is because when we're flat towing our Nautilus here, Per the owner's manual, we have to unhook the battery in order to successfully flat tow the vehicle. So although a battery disconnect or an automatic battery disconnect isn't required for this purpose, it's gonna make your life that much easier because let's face it, who wants to carry around some tools with them, pop the hood on our vehicle, and mess with the battery terminals each time they wanna tow their vehicle. Having a switch mounted inside the vehicle that we can simply hit on or off when we need to hook up or disconnect our battery it's gonna make our towing experience that much more easy. So this is what our battery disconnect looks like. It's gonna be a solenoid mounted inside in the engine bay here of our vehicle. We have a couple cables running out attaching to the battery. Now, we'll explain this a little bit more detailed later, but essentially how this works is, we're gonna be cutting off the factory battery terminal and bolting it to one of the cables coming from our solenoid. And then the other one, we're going to bolt to the battery with a new terminal, which we'll give you the part number for later. But essentially, it's just going to be interrupting the supply of power to our vehicle, so we can easily turn that off or on with a flick of a switch. So if we come inside our vehicle here, we'll show you where we have the switch mounted. So for our particular installation, we decided to mount the switch here on this panel. And the reason I chose this panel is it's going to be hidden from us while we're driving down the road. Therefore, we don't have to worry about accidentally hitting the switch and killing power to our vehicle when we're out on the highway. So here's our switch. And if we look over here to the door, you're gonna see this panel here. This panel here is gonna cover that switch while the door is shut. Therefore, we don't have to worry about accidentally disconnecting our battery. And the way this works is, if we take a step back and we look at the dash on our vehicle here, I'm simply gonna hit the engine start button, not gonna start it, just gonna turn on all the lights We should see some of our interior lights come on as well as the dash light up. So we know the vehicle is on and the battery is uh, connected here. So in order to test out the battery disconnect to show you that it's working, all we need to do is hit that switch and we should hear a pretty loud audible click from the solenoid letting us know that power has been disconnected. And obviously all the lights on our dash and interior of the vehicle should shut off if everything was done correctly. So I'll go ahead and hit the switch now. So you can see we hear the audible click and everything is gonna be shut off on our vehicle. So this is what we need to do before we tow our vehicle to make sure the battery is disconnected and we can safely head down the road. So something I would like to point out to you guys, it's not necessarily a con of the automatic battery disconnect, just a con of disconnecting your battery in general, just to give you guys a heads up. Any of your radio presets or your seat memory functions will have to be reset after unhooking the battery. The vehicle will unfortunately lose that memory but there's really not anything you can do about that. It just kind of something is what it is. It's not necessarily something that is caused specifically by the Roadmaster automatic battery disconnect, just simply by unhooking our battery in general. So you will have to redo your radio presets and your memory seat functions if your particular model is equipped with those features. So in regards to installation, we will need to pick up something extra that doesn't come in our kit, and that's gonna be a battery terminal. But aside from that, everything is pretty straightforward. There's gonna be a few modifications we need to make, but it's nothing I don't think you guys can do at home by yourselves with the right tools, some time, and a little bit of patience. Let's go ahead and walk you through this entire process step-by-step step now. So the first step of our installation is to mount the solenoid. So before we actually mount it to the vehicle, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a pair of needle nose pliers and you're gonna hold on to that inner nut closest to the solenoid here and then you're gonna take a wrench and loosen that nut on the outside. Now, the reason we need to do this is we actually need to rotate both of these cables to this orientation here. Out of the box, they're gonna come pointing straight down and that's not gonna work for where we need to mount it. So you're gonna to have to rotate these. So again, just hold the inner nut there with a pair of needle nose pliers and then use a wrench to turn the outside. Then once we get it in the correct position here, again, use our needle nose to hold the nut, and then we can tighten down the nut here to secure it into place. And then what we're gonna do, over here on the driver's side, we have our shock tower mount. So we're actually already gonna have an existing hole here for our ground. This is our ground stud. 
what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a wrench and we're gonna loosen that ground stud. We don't need to remove it completely, just loosen it so we can slide the bracket here for our battery disconnect over that stud and then we're gonna actually tighten that down to secure it. And on the other side here, we're simply just gonna take one of the self-tapping screws that come in our kit and secure on the other end. You can see we have a nice sturdy mounting location now. And what we're gonna do next is the white wire coming from this smaller terminal here, this is gonna be for a ground. So the first thing I did is I cut off the extra slack and then I crimped on one of the ring terminals that comes in our kit here. You may need to drill out the center of it or swap it out for a larger one because then I just used the existing stud here. It's a ground stud, so I just supplied a nut to secure it to that stud. Now, if you don't have to, want to have to worry about getting the extra ring terminal and extra nut, you can just simply take the self-tapping screw that comes in your kit and just ground it to the metal here on the shock tower. So the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna come over to our battery here, the positive terminal. You're gonna have this little cover here, just simply remove that. Then we're going to take a 10 millimeter socket and we're gonna remove that nut there so we can remove the positive cable entirely. Once we have that loose enough, we should be able to jiggle this off. Just like that. So once we have this terminal off here, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna be cutting this. It's pretty soft metal. We should be able to cut through it with some tin snips, but we're gonna be cutting out around our stud here. We wanna leave that in intact and attached to the cable. We're just gonna be removing this outside portion here. Next, we're going to take a pair of pliers here. We're going to hold that cable there so it doesn't rotate on us. Then we're going to take a 10 millimeter socket and we're going to remove that nut. Once we do that, we're going to come over here to our solenoid here and we're going to have two cables. One is labeled battery cable one is labeled battery post. We're gonna be grabbing the one that says battery cable, and we're simply gonna be attaching it to that stud there. But before we do that, we wanna take the red heat shrink that comes in our kit and slide that over the end of the cable. Now we can go ahead and make our connection here with our factory nut. So I'm gonna hold that cable there so it's nice and straight. Then we can tighten it down. Once we get that nice and tight, we're gonna take our heat shrink here, we're gonna slide it over those connections, and then we're gonna use a heat gun to seal it up. So as you can see, we have the heat shrink around our connection here. Now, in order to do this, you actually have to take off a little bit of metal between the two pieces there, as well as grind off the stud. Uh, we went ahead and just did that with the Dremel tool. However, if you don't want to worry about all that, you can simply just take some electrical tape, tape up the connections there. I think we're going to come back over this heat shrink and tape that up again just as an extra measure of security. And then last but not least here, we're going to take some wire loom and just put it over our cable here. So for our next connection here, which is the cable labeled battery post, what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to obtain one of these terminals here, which we sell at eTrailer.com. And basically how this is gonna work is we're gonna remove that wing nut, and then we're gonna attach this to the positive battery terminal. Sometimes these can be a tight fit. You may need to expand the clamps here to better fit your size terminal. Once we have it on the terminal here, go ahead and tighten the nut here to secure it. I want to make sure it's nice and tight. We don't have any play. And then what we're going to do next is, I'm sure you probably guessed, we're going to take the ring terminal here from our solenoid. 
we're gonna route that over into the stud there on our battery terminal. Now it looks like this is a little bit too tight of a fit, so we're just gonna take a drill bit here and just open up that hole slightly. We should be able to then fit over the stud. Now we can simply take our wing nut here and secure the cable to the terminal. And we'll take our other piece of wire loom here. And I'll simply just place this over this cable as well. And if you want, when you're done, you can take some zip ties here to secure these wires up. They're pretty stout though, so as long as we just tuck them to the side, they shouldn't really go anywhere. So now the last thing we're gonna do is you're gonna notice a duplex wire here coming off the main cable here. It's got this gray sheathing on it and there's two wires in here. So these are gonna be routing inside the vehicle to our toggle switch. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now and then we'll show you the path we took. So we have our gray duplex wire routed inside the cab of the vehicle now, running from the solenoid. You can see it here. We have it taped to some existing cables here just to keep it secure. And then there's gonna be an opening down through here that we can snake our wire through and then we'll show you where it comes out underneath. So now coming out from underneath the headlight housing, you can see that gray wire there. At this point here, we went up and over the frame, and then we're gonna remove a couple screws here from this little belly pan, and then we're gonna snake our wire down through here. We have it zip tied to an existing wire we ran earlier with our diodes. Um, if you have diode wiring, chances are you're gonna have wires in a similar location, so you can just tie them to that but we basically just have it bonded to this little four pole here. Tracing it back further, we're gonna come up and over this little cross member section here. And then in this area here, right around where this is, along with our exhaust mounting bracket, we're gonna have a grommet here just directly above the brake lines. So you're gonna have to just pop that grommet out from bottom there, and then we can actually just shove our wire up through that grommet and then we'll uh, reach in there inside the vehicle and pull it the rest of the way through. So now we're inside the vehicle here. That grommet is gonna be located pretty much by the gas pedal. It's gonna be right in that far right corner below there. So in order to get to that, we're gonna have to remove some panels and lift up this carpet. The first panel we're gonna be removing is this little threshold panel here that goes just like that. So you wanna be careful, but there's gonna be some connectors on the bottom there. You're just gonna take a trim panel tool, pry that up, and then we do have one electrical uh, connector we need to unplug as well. And that'll just simply pull off. And then the next thing we're gonna be removing is this little panel here. So that's what this looks like. And again, it's held in place similarly that we've been using so far. Those little push to connect lock connectors. Then we have one at the bottom. There is one thing you have to do though before you can pull this panel off once you release all those clips is that we have the hood latch release. So that's what this looks like, that goes there. So in order to remove that, you're gonna have to sort of bend over inside the footwell here, but the uh, sort of the connector that this mounts to, there's gonna be a tab on either side. You're gonna take a pick tool or a flathead screwdriver and you're gonna have to depress both of those tabs on either side, then we can pull straight out. But once you have this out, you should then be able to maneuver this panel out of place. You have a couple panels that are attached to the floor there you'll need to remove as well. But that'll pretty much get us to this point here. And then all we're doing is gonna be simply ripping up the carpet. You're gonna have to maneuver it around the brake and gas pedal a little bit, but just pulling that back. And then once we get it about this much up, we should be able to grab that wire there and that grommet. Now we actually did need to extend our wires just a little bit. You may or may not have to do this depending on the route you took. Uh, you don't have to take the exact route we took. If there's one that you see that's a shortcut that'll work better for you, feel free to use that. But once we have our wires routed inside the vehicle here, we need to determine a good place to mount our switch. So in regards to switch mounting, we wanna make sure that this isn't something that we can accidentally hit while we're driving down the road. That way it doesn't kill power to our vehicle. So a good place that we determined is gonna be up here. So sort of in line with your dash here in that vent. 
We actually have it mounted here already. And the reason I like this location is there's gonna be a little panel here on the door that while our door is shut and driving down the road, this is actually gonna be covered. So we don't have to worry about accidentally hitting it. And there's also gonna be plenty of space here behind this panel to mount our switch. So once you remove that panel there, you should be able to pull this one back a little bit. We're not removing it completely. There's just a couple tabs there on the back. We're just gonna pry it up just to make sure we're not gonna be drilling into anything behind this. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a step drill bit and drill a 5 8 inch diameter hole right here in this panel. And then once we do that, we're gonna take our wire and we're gonna bring it through that hole. We're gonna place the mounting nut that goes on the back of this switch here over that wire, obviously before we bring it through the hole. And then we're gonna make our connections to the back of the switch. You're simply just gonna strip off some of this jacket here to reveal the two wires. Then you'll use some uh, wire crimps or wire cutters to remove some of the jacket from each of the wires. You really only need about an eighth of an inch. Then you'll take a small Phillips head screwdriver. There's two terminals on the back of the switch. You'll loosen those, insert your wires, tighten it down. And then pretty much all that's left is to push the switch here into position and then secure on the back with your jam nut. But that's pretty much it. So now it's time to test our system out to make sure everything's working properly. You're gonna have a fuse that comes in your kit that'll install in line on this gray wire that we just routed. It's actually gonna be located up where the solenoid is in the engine bay. So it's pretty simple, just pop that fuse in. It may or may not already be in the off position. So if you don't have any power to your vehicle, when you press the start stop button, you'll know you need to hit that switch to turn everything on and wake it up. Assuming we have everything installed correctly. But I can see inside the vehicle here, I do have some lights on. I have some display here on the dash. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit that switch and if everything works correctly, it should cut power to all those accessories. You'll hear the solenoid click and then I can see all the lights went off on the vehicle. So I know the solenoid has done its job. And now to complete our installation inside the vehicle here, we're simply just gonna button up and reinstall all our panels that we removed previously in the reverse order. And that's gonna do it today for our look and installation of the Roadmaster automatic battery disconnect here on our 2020 Lincoln Nautilus.